Welcome to Ukenic. In this video, we're gonna uh, troubleshoot and give you a few tips if your OBD2 port does not work. So, if your OBD2 port doesn't work, then you can diagnose the vehicle. And also, what's uh, worse is that you can't pass the emission test. Uh, you take your car to emission station, and it's gonna fail because they plug in the scanner there, scanner into the OBD2 port, and it gets no communication with the vehicle. So, for example, if, if you are using a scanner, and then we're using the Ucanix scanner over here. And it's going to try to read the VIN number, but then if you go to any of these control modules, so I mean these cars um, today have 20 or 30 or sometimes even more control modules doing different things and monitoring and controlling different things. So here if we go to engine control unit, for example, you get no communication. If you go transmission, no communication. So any control module that you try to communicate with, you're not going to get anything. Now, if you can communicate with some but not the others, then maybe the OBD2 port is probably fine. You've got other electrical issues on the car. But if you don't get any communication with with any of the control modules on the car, then there's a couple of things that um, are worth checking. And the first one is going to be the voltage on the vehicle. So this um, the OBD2 port and the scanner might not connect to the vehicle if the voltage is below 12 vo um, uh, below 10 volt excuse me uh, oh, under 10 volt the ECU or the central gateway that connects all the different control modules might not turn on and then you don't get any um, connection at the OBD2 OBD port now right here we have the OBD2 port this is actually connected to the vehicle under the dash we just extended it here so we can see it better but uh, if the OBD2 port does not work, check the voltage, you know, maybe connect with jumper cables or um, uh, charge the battery to uh, to fully charge and then reconnect that scanner. See if um, that, will, will, that will work and fix your problem. If it doesn't fix the problem, then the other thing that you should do is check fuses. Uh, a lot of makes will have a, a fuse called data link connector and that will be for the OBD2 port some. Do not have a dedicated fuse for the OBD2 port. They might just have that as part of maybe either the radio or the cigarette outlets. Um, uh, so check those fuses out as well, and if they're blown, uh, then replace them. But lastly, the other thing that if you know all the fuses check fine, we can do a little bit of testing on this OBD2 port. So right here is the port, and it matches with that, which this is going to match with what you got under the dashboard. So pin four and pin 5 they're both grounds uh, one is coming from the chassis one is coming in signal ground so that um, should be coming from the ECU so but they, they're both ground you should get ground oh, here down here on the bottom here we got 16 uh, pin 16 and that is the positive it comes from the battery so we had a, a, a vehicle one time where we were getting no communication with with the OBD2 port we can't scan the car nothing couldn't pass emissions so what we did is we checked pin 16 here I'm gonna go to voltage and me measure DC current and then you come here and then we should get the voltage of the vehicle on this on this pin here so there is 12.3 all right so if you got no power to that one and this is basically what connects and powers on that um, your scanner what you can do is check the pins on the back uh, underneath the dashboard check that wire um, in that case what we did the way we fixed it we actually back fed um, this 15 uh, pin 16 here at the corner we back fed it 12 volts uh, from the battery because what was happening is that the wire that was going under the dash had a short it was cut somewhere uh, so by uh, feeding 12 volt to this pin right here at the corner pin that pin right there we we're able to turn on the scanner and the car uh, was able to the scanner was able to communicate with all the control engine control unit transmission control unit and everything else on the car so you're going to check that but there is also so uh, pin 16 here check that for 12 volt if it doesn't try back feeding it you know um, um, um disconnect the pin here because um, you don't know if there's the pin is shorted or it's cut so this pin just simply disconnect and then unplug it and then feed direct 12 volt on the back here and see if that fixes it if that doesn't the, 
or if that's fine you've got 12 volt there the other thing you need to do is check 4 and 5 so 4 and 5 should be ground so since we have the black connected to ground we're gonna check continuity on those two so so since uh, 4 let's see one two three four since that's ground we should hear that beep again here okay that's working then on number five next to it too you should hear um, that beep signal as well uh, if you don't you can do the same thing you can um, unplug these two pins on the back and then maybe uh, send ground to pin four and five and then see if that will fix your problem and um, allow your scanner to communicate with uh, the vehicle but uh, technically I mean you need to figure out where that um, if, if you have no communication at all uh, you might have have a damaged uh, wire and another problem that happens a lot is that uh, sometimes you might have a one control module that brings uh, that has an issue has a fault a short in it and the way that it's failed it brings down the whole can network and then nothing on the vehicle can communicate so but if you have a basic scanner and the scanner does not power on, it should at least power on if you've got ground, ground, and positive down here. Those basic scanners that power through the OBD2 port, they should power up. So if you it's not powering up, you don't have ground signal there. You don't have a, a positive 12 volt over here. So hopefully this helps a little bit. Um, if uh, you have a problem where the OBD2 port doesn't work, and you figure it out just let us know so and let others know so they can uh, learn and figure out because every car is different and sometimes there's there's strange reasons why those obd2 ports stop uh, working so please share it with the community thank you